rather unusual strategy to make money and the fact that how that fits up with the monster growth. Tell us about it. Yeah, so they take an opposite approach to most retailers and they've just had ridiculous growth. They have $10.4 billion market cap right now and they had seven, wow. $700 million in sales last year. So and this is an athletic wear company. Yeah, they're a yoga pant maker, um, which is a huge category right now and their pants sell for $125, um, which is kind of steep considering you know the landscape out there. But the CEO came in and she said, we don't want to do data analytics. You hear a lot about big data retailers right now. She said, we don't want to do any of that. I'm going to spend a lot of time in the stores, hear what our people are saying, what our customers like, what they don't like, and we'll approach products. And like so that. how does that reflect itself inside the store? So yeah. you, uh, Simon wants to go buy some yoga pants, <laughs> as so, is his, his nature. As I'll be doing after and, the show. And what <laughs> he experience there, perhaps consciously or maybe unconsciously? So there, there's yeah. two major things that they do. Um, yeah, no, I would do it they position their folding tables where their staffers are. Um, instead of in the back room like most retailers, they put it right next to the dressing room so they eavesdrop on you. And they hear if you don't like the fit of this pant or if the sleeves are too tight. And then they consciously write down what these people are saying and then every week they get a report back to headquarters will they'll tweak things. And Christine Day, the CEO, was at a store and overheard someone talking about the sleeves on the sweater and she stopped production of it the next day uh, because she, she thought it was that impactful and it turned out to be the right decision. And then also, and they sell stuff for men so you can actually do this, if you go there, there's a big chalkboard in every dressing room and if you like something or dislike something or you wanted to make a request, you could write on the chalkboard and then they... Well, I don't, about, I don't know about you, Dennis, but this is, seems like a very really <coughs> good idea to shockingly listen to the customers. <laughs> Literally. It seems like it. But it, it, also, seems, it seems like great. But it also seems like you're missing out by, by not understanding the data behind it, too. And that it's very easy for companies to, in some ways, believe their own hype. You know, we can do it differently this way because right. their company's so highly valued and the products are so hot. I think that the bigger test will come perhaps when the products lose their luster. That's right. Um, which there's some skeptics out there. Everyone says, can they sustain this growth? It's, you know, these crazy comps that they have in there. Well, let's see sales. what the investors have yeah. been looking at because we can now look at the stock here um, on, on the chart in, in a moment. But yeah, I mean, that, that that's gently trending that's upwards. That's just today. That's just today, gently Maybe trending upwards. Maybe we get a 12 month chart there. Chart there. Um, it's almost doubled over the last year. All right, that's all Almost doubled over the last year. Well, that, that's basically what we need to <laughs> there know. There you go. There we go. Almost doubled over the last year, up from 40 to um, close to 80 there. Um, yeah, I mean, can they keep that up? I mean, this is a fashion product in well, some ways, yeah. right? This is it, a fashion it is, it's definitely a fashion product, right. a very expensive fashion product. But they have other levers they can pull. They only have 174 stores. So you look at most retailers, they're all about expanding for growth. and. They can go to other countries, they can expand here. They're not saturated, which is one of the key things in retail. Well, well why is that not key, not key? It seems like you want to have as much product available for the people who want to buy it. Well, that's the other thing. And, and one other contrarian approach is they purposely stock less than their customers want, and it works. I've spoken with rabid Lulu fans who say they have to go to the store the day something's released, otherwise that hot pink color's out, or that fit of pants out, so they purposely have less inventory. And, than and so the retailers. business purpose beyond that is what? Just keep people wanting more? Or? Keep people wanting more. It's kind of like um, what Nike does with their Air Jordan releases. It creates this like fever. Yeah, but that, but that, that creates fights, right? Actual <laughs> fights. <laughs> well, and and, 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 this, and yes. no, I don't think there are fights at Lulu. No I've fights. never heard of that. <laughs> Um, if there are, call us and we'll, 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 we'll come down there and watch. Um, so um, what, what about the um, burgeoning aftermarket and second-hand Lululemon stuff? Uh, I haven't is seen much on that. I have I heard, I'm hearing, I'm hearing there is, I'm hearing yes. there is um, an aftermarket for sweaty sweatpants. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. We'll is that not true? It. You've not heard of that? I have not heard of you're that. Gonna, you're going to rummage into that. <laughs> okay. okay, well, I've, I've heard of, okay, well, I'm, um, I'm fascinated by this. I'm, I do, I do think listening to the customers is actually the, yeah, the, the right thing. The and I'll tell you, I mean, Le Levi's used to, when they made their jeans, they used to have, you know, they used to have the studs in them, but they used to have them in other places that used to um, cause a bit of pain to some men. <laughs> and it wasn't until the CEO actually experienced that that they changed the design of them. And it was it was like well, you refused to listen. Their CEO uh, head to toe see, dressing. I there. think that a lot of this is just confirmation bias, which is that they're doing very well. So they think the stuff that they're doing is brilliant. But it's, it, it can't right. be that simple. 